about the mindset of the people uh, that are in these federal positions, these federal prosecutors. I mean, now, uh, I mean, that's an example of how they can pass a law and then not use it till 14 years later. It's right. like, well, the law, the law is unconstitutionally vague. And quite frankly, Alex, there are Supreme Court opinions that say the, the Congress cannot stop you from annoying or offensive speech because the First Amendment protects annoying or offensive speech. And the Supreme Court for all of all of the wacky things that it's done, you know, it uh, it allowed slavery, it allowed uh, abortion, uh, it allows prosecutions of, uh, of of crimes that should exist. Today, by a nine to nothing vote, gave federal prosecutors the greatest rebuke that they have ever had in modern times when it found unconstitutional their favorite tool, their favorite weapon, which is the honest services law. That law allowed federal prosecutors to prosecute even people who did the right thing if they harbored in their mind a desire to benefit from it themselves. The mayor of Newark, New Jersey, went to jail because he had sex with a real estate agent that the city hired to sell city property. Did she sell the city property at market rates? Yes. Did the city lose a nickel? Yes. But because the mayor had sex with her, he was convicted by a federal prosecutor who's now the governor of New Jersey and by a federal jury uh, in Newark for violating the honest services law. He was more interested in sex than he was in a professional relationship. Well, that's a thought crime. I, I mean, that's that's controlling who we can associate today, with. The Supreme Court today, with everybody from Ruth Bader Ginsburg to Antonin Scalia and the other seven in between agreeing, invalidated that and said to the feds, you cannot use language created creatively to prosecute people. You must use statutory language narrowly. Now, at the, at the risk of getting too into the weeds, I make this argument for you, Alex, because I am convinced that this prosecution, about which you have rightly complained and which you have wonderfully exposed in Philadelphia, ought never to occur. And if it does occur, will be thrown out at the appellate level, especially, especially after this case came down today. But we should not even have people in a position of power, in a position to decide who gets indicted and who gets prosecuted, who have a mindset that they can use the power of the government to punish speech. Because if anything is sacrosanct in this country, is that you can say anything you want, anytime you want, anywhere you want about anybody in the government. That's well, that's what's, so, that's what's so incredible about this, is that we see countless videos of police beating somebody up and then charging the person they've beat up with assaulting them. You see countless... Uh, you know, videos of police going to the wrong house and killing somebody's chihuahua. Uh, we see countless videos of police all over the country pulling a motorcycler over who has a camera mounted on his head because he's he's videotaping him uh, a YouTube video and indicting him for wiretapping when there's no reasonable perception of privacy. I mean, uh, more and more, the government is really showing us that they want to be tyrants, that this is real tyranny. But the good news is, and it's evidenced by your show being the number one show out of the gates on the Fox Business Network with its first premiere, is that the sleeping giant is awakening. I cannot stress enough, Judge Andrew Napolitano, and for all the listeners out there, and I want you to briefly comment on this because we're almost out of time, that when we say there's an awakening happening, I don't think the system even understands how big this this I, is. I, I think I think you're right, and and I've I've been privileged to come along at the right time. My show Freedom Watch, which can be seen on the Fox Business Network, 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. These are Eastern times on Saturday, 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, has sort of captured the crest of a wave. If you ask people, if Ron Paul told me this, and he's right. Do you want to take care of yourself or do you want the government to take care of you? Do you want to make decisions on your own or do you want the government to make decisions for you? Do you want to be able to think as you please and say what you think and publish what you say or do you want the government to interfere with that? When you put things to people like that, almost everyone comes down on the side of freedom. And that's what's made Freedom Watch successful. That's what's made you successful. And that's what's made the government fearful. Well, there's nothing better the few times in my life when I've had a chance to go for a hike, a week-long hike, where you got the backpack on, you got your tent, you've got your food, 
and just to go out there and to rely on yourself. And it's really an analogy of that. I mean, I don't want a bunch of distant bureaucrats who happen to be crooks nine times out of ten running my life. It's so fundamental. They've bankrupted our society. They've launched all these illegal wars. Bush, three weeks ago, was out giving speeches about how he ordered torture. Meanwhile, they sent people to prison who followed those orders. I mean, this is tyranny. And I, and I keep saying that. I mean, folks, do you know where tyranny leads? And I think God's given us a chance. I think, you know, history's giving us a chance, uh, Judge, and I want you to speak to this. We are at a crossroads. And if good people like yourself and Ron Paul and many others, but also just the rank and file folks out there, stand up as leaders, speak up, point out the emperor is wearing no clothes, and rebuke this evil like Hitler should have been rebuked, like Stalin should have been rebuked, or Mao Zedong before they really got going, we have a chance to avert a historical disaster. Because there's no doubt studying history that if we don't take America back right now, America won't lead us into the 21st century worldwide for liberty. America will lead the way into a new dark age of despotism that dwarfs anything ever seen in the history of man. I am reading a terrific book. It's the second time I've read it in my life. It's Hayek's, H-A-Y-E-K, F-A Hayek's, The Road to Serfdom. It was written in 1944, and it describes how Europe descended into serfdom as people like Mussolini and Hitler were popularly elected against legitimate uh, opponents, and the public and the, and the government gave them all the power that they had. It is eerily, eerily reminiscent, eerily predictive, because it was written 65 uh, years ago, of exactly what's happening today. Central planning by bureaucrats, not even by popularly elected officials, but by bureaucrats. The decision that power is more in, is more, uh, in the spotlight than liberty. The decision that individuals should not be able to make choices for themselves. Look, we have to be on the watch for the loss of liberty. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens slowly and it happens gradually. And whenever anyone sees the loss of liberty, whether it's a cop preventing someone from taking a picture of what the cop is doing, or whether it's a prosecutor prosecuting someone for speaking uh, the truth, whether it's a judge compromising liberty, or whether it's a public, uh, an elected official compromising liberty, it must be shouted from the rooftops. They can send it to me at Fox News, and I'll get it on the air, and they can send it to you at InfoWars, and you'll get it on the air. And it all makes sense. Well, what about Obama? People will see the truth. What about Obama yesterday? He, he weaseled it into his speech about our democracy is about institutions, not about individuals. And individuals, basically, he said, get in the way of America when we're not a democracy, we're a republic. Uh, can you speak to that disgusting statement? Oh, sure. I mean, he, he believes that we are a democracy, and he believes that we, we are not even a democracy of individuals, but a democracy of groups. He believes in collectivism, which is that the groups to which we belong have rights. We don't have rights as individuals, and whichever group speaks the loudest can take its claim on the government. He does not believe in natural rights. He does not believe that the individual is greater than the government, and he believes in a progressive form of government, which is that the government knows best. That would be the same government that told BP to drill in 5,000 feet instead of 500 feet, even though nobody had ever monitored a wellhead that exploded at, the, at that depth. That would be the same government that relied on, on inaccurate computer models when they set out the process for BP filling out its yeah. forms for the, uh, for the permits. That would be the same government that said to BP, don't worry about liability. The maximum you'll ever have to spend is $75 million. Judge Andrew, we are out of time. God bless you. The show, again, comes up uh, every Saturday and is re-aired over the weekend on the Fox Business Network. Network. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Great job. God bless you. You are a trailblazer. Thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure. We'll be back. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying a solar power generator. Number one, new climate legislation could easily double or triple your electric bill. Number two, our new energy czar wants to control how much power your electric company allows you to have. It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Number three, in some areas of the country, the power grid is dangerously overloaded. And now new socialist legislation is only compounding the problem. Number four, dangerous weather is always a threat to local grids. Every year, thousands of families lose their power from weather-related outages. Number five. 
A solar power generator provides powerful backup insurance and peace of mind. Folks, I really believe in the solar power generators offered by Solutions from Science, one of my oldest sponsors. You can get more information at www.mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun. So go to mysolarbackup.com or call 1-877-327-0365. Hello, friends. This is Alex Jones. You've heard me talk about Calbin Five Star Soaps for years. This is an American-made product of the highest quality and compares to nothing you will find in stores. You can buy factory direct, shipped via UPS right to your door. Check them out on the web at fivestarsoap.com or call 800-340-7091. Take my word for it. Once you've used pure soap, you won't buy anything else. Since 1947, Calbin Soap Company has been showing consumers that soap can be tough on dirt and gentle on the environment. Buy American and stay clean. As well as support InfoWars, visit 5starsoap.com today or call 